Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me this morning. It's the morning market review. It's Friday, the 23rd of June. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a senior market specialist at FXCM, and my email address is rshaw at fxcm.com. Just going to go ahead and bring up our high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey, Howard, good morning to you. Nice to have you on the webinar, as always. Thank you, everyone, for signing in this morning. Much appreciated. All right, here's our market commentaries disclaimer. Good morning, Kim. Thank you very much for joining this morning. Much appreciated. And uh, here is our references, uh, marketscope2.0, tradingview.com. I'm going to bring up market scope first, and um, just something that I think we need to be aware of. Uh, I think that the markets are due a correction. It's a big, a big statement to make. Let me give you my reasoning. And um, here is the S&P 500, and you can see that. Um, I've got the RSI underneath the um, candlesticks. Where is the RSI? It's overbought. It's on 80. It's on 80. Uh, this is quite a long impulse move. The markets cannot move up indefinitely. There has to be some sort of pullback. That sets up the platform for the next impulse move. And I just wonder if we're near the apex of the swing on the S&P 500. And um, the fact that we're overbought here does make me worried. I don't see a change in trend. The trend here is up. We've got a higher peak followed by a higher trough. And we've got a series of those. And that's a bull market. That's an uptrend. I think that the next higher trough in the series is something that we should be keeping a lookout for. Let's take a look at NASDAQ. And NASDAQ, I think, is uh, signaling or suggesting similar. We can see we're very overbought on the weekly. I think we've got a terrific trend here. You can see that it moves in this ebb and flow, this zigzag. But uh, just take a look how um, lengthy this last impulse move is. And I just again wonder when is that going to end? And the fact of the matter is we are overbought on that RSI. RSIs tend to fo follow what we call the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. They spend 20% of the time at the extremities above 80, below 20. 80% 80 of the time, they're between 20 and 80. That means that we should see some sort of uh, normalization in the RSI. Uh, I want to take this to another type of analytical tool. Uh, we have seen it before, but let's take a look at the VIX, which is the uh, volatility index for the S&P. Hey, Zanetta, good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining it. Lovely to have you on the webinar. All right, so let's bring up uh, trading view here. And I've got the VIX. And um, the top chart, the top candlestick here is the VIX. This uh, middle chart is the RSI of the VIX. And then the bottom chart here is the SPX 500. Now, the way that the VIX works, what, what it is, it's a index that's been effectively put together using um, the options on the S&P 500 constituents. And you've got call options and you've got put options. When you are looking to protect your portfolio, you would enter into a, you'd go long a put contract. It's effectively a type of insurance protection. Think of it like insurance. 
Uh, and when you are very confident about a rising market, you'll enter into what we call call options. And what tends to happen is where there's a build up of put options, we move in this uh, northeasterly direction. Let me just make this a different color. Okay. And when there is a build up of call options, we move uh, in the southeasterly direction. So put options, northeast. Call option southeast. Now, you can see we are very low in the VIX. We are at 12.9. In other words, there's been a huge buildup of call options. Call options suggest positivity, suggest that the uh, whoever is uh, buying options is they buying call options. And at face value, that seems to be bullish. But what uh, some technical analysts use the VIX as, they use it as a contrarian indicator. In other words, when things get too positive, it's time to worry. When things get too negative, it's time to seek out opportunity. Well, we're probably getting too optimistic here. We're very low uh, in terms of our VIX. And this RSI here, I think it's a quite a nice uh, technical um, indicator when we apply it to the VIX. What we can do here is we can uh, modify the oversold level. So let's put the oversold level at say 35. I'll make this uh, black and easier on the R. Okay. And here is the, uh, now take a look here. Take a look here, guys. Uh, we crossed 35 here on the RSR, and you can see that there's a pullback on the S&P 500. So here, we, here we're using VIX as contrarian. Here we see a pullback below 35, and there is three, three or four weeks of pullback, okay? Here is a pullback. And we get another sort of four or five weeks of pullback. Well, we well below the 35 now. We well below the 35. And I think that at some stage, uh, the contrarian signal kicks in and we get some sort of movement a few weeks to the downside. So I think that we're pretty close to this apex. So let's just review what we've spoken about this morning. We've spoken about the fact that the S&P 500, let me just go back to S&P 500 on Market Scope 2.0, is overbought. Is overbought. In other words, uh, it looks to me as if there is going to be some sort of corrective action here, possibly some sort of profit taking. And the market's just very complacent at the moment. Very complacent at the moment. And I think that uh, the RSI as a contrarian indicator suggesting well just be careful just be careful and if we go back to the um, market scope 2.0 um, take a look at this candle here this is a very interesting candle um, all we can do is make inferences we can't be definite but this candle here is what we call an inside period an inside period is always going to be a warning now, sometimes inside periods, so here's an inside period, uh, are just a pause before the next movement up. But generally, what happens is, here, see, look at this inside period, leads to the sell down. The bulls have stopped taking price up. Okay, bulls have stopped taking price up. They don't have the uh, con conviction to take price up this week higher than the price last week. Bulls haven't come into the market yet. Uh, a big pardon, big pardon. Bears haven't come into the market yet because we haven't seen an utter movement to take out last week's low, but there's a pause. That pause is a uh, sort of a deep breath. It's, hmm, uh, I'm a little uncertain about which way the market is going to move. So we've got this inside week that has uh, started, uh, that, that is uh, charted right at the time when we we're overbought, right at the time when we see a contrarian uh, VIX uh, movement. Uh, 
Uh, your comments of overbought and oversold on RSI also apply to forex pairs when you are in zone one and zone three. Uh, yes, that they would. Just bear in mind, just bear in mind, yeah, Kim, uh, the VIX, the VIX, when we're talking about the VIX, we're only talking about S&P 500 there. Why are we only talking about S&P 500? Because it's options on the S&P 500. So we can't apply VIX to any other index because it's the options on the S&P 500. Which brings me to the next point. So there's a good segue here. We can change VIX to something called VXN. VXN. Okay. That is the uh, volatility index, but it's on the NASDAQ 100. So instead of looking at the options on the S&P 500 here, we're looking at the options on the, um, we're looking at the options on the NASDAQ. There is another one out, VOLK, V-O-L-Q, I think it is. NASDAQ 100 index volatility. So these are the, these are the, the, the different sort of um, volatility indexes. And again, mm, let's just take a look at when we see the movements down in the NASDAQ. Here we've got the RSI touching on that 35 and we get three to four weeks pullback. Here we've got it below. Here we get sort of that four to six, five to six pullback. Here we've been extended. We're extended. We're extremely um, positive at the moment, according to the Volk. Okay. So there is a chance here, I think, that we are overextended. We're a chance here so that we're overextended. So the RSR, Kim, um, has a different application, so to speak, when we're looking at volatility um, indexes. When we're looking at just the normal charts on MarketScope, then, then the um, overbought, oversold um, readings, I think, um, become important. Um, I hope that makes sense. So uh, if we go through to the uh, weekly, I beg, I beg your pardon, if we go through to the daily, we've got an RSR, also to me, uh, measure overbought, oversold. You just got to realize, Kim, that the time frames are different. So, yes, we did we did go overbought here on S and P 500. It normalized. We got the correction down, but there's something more uh, at play here in terms of the weekly. I think that the weekly, which is what we call the primary trend, the daily is what we call the secondary trend. I think that there is a case for the primary trend to pull back. Uh, then you'll see probably the secondary trend move down towards your zone, um, your zone threes between the the blue and the the little blue and the lower red. Uh, does that make sense? Just let me know. All right. Um, all right. We took a look at SPX. We took a look at Nasdaq. They both look uh, top heavy to me, and I think that um, we can take a look at the DAX here. And I think that the uh, the fact that the American indexes are looking top heavy, well, that's already starting to play out in the DAX. It's already starting to play out in the DAX. So the DAX has got, had a really uh, rough week. Uh, we changed the label, the labels yesterday. I've just got a reference trough and a reference peak, and I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure the the trend uh, from these references. See if we can get some sort of bead on market direction. But take a look at the daily chart. It slipped here. It slipped through to zone one. So already the um, the risk markets sh showing some um, some tension. And I think that um, the um, pullbacks here are not necessarily uh, changes in the primary trend. On the contrary, I think they are exploitable opportunities. And the reason that I think they are exploitable opportunities is because price never moves moves in a straight line. It zigs and zags up. And if we can find out when the apex is of the impulse move, take note of the correction move, find the, the nadder of the correction, and then try and get in on the next 
apex. So that's the idea. Same thing with a downtrend, never moves in a straight line, always zigs and zags. And we're trying to take advantage of the rallies in the downtrend. All right, let's take a, a, um, a look now at some of the forex pairs. So we've, we've looked at the risk markets. The risk markets are looking uh, quite um, top heavy. Let's go through to the US dollar. The US dollar is a safe haven, okay? Uh, when things get um, when things get sort of choppy and there's a risk off sentiment on the uh, on the stock markets and the risk on markets, money tends to flow back into safe havens. One of those safe havens would be the US dollar. Well, the US dollar is having a good week. Okay, it's it's not trending; it's consolidating sideways. But you could see we've got the strong blue candle here. Um, so the consolidation pattern, the lower boundary is holding. And just like we've had an inside day, sorry, an inside week on the S&P 500, well, we've got an inside week on the dollar. In other words, the, the bears, which uh, were in control over the last three candlesticks, they've stopped taking price down. The bulls haven't totally taken price up yet. But I would suspect that the dollar might come back into play if there is some sort of weakness coming through on the um, coming through on the um, uh, risk markets. Gurdip makes an excellent point here. Recent moves by central banks spooking the markets. I think so. I think that is certainly the case, Gurdip. The um, central banks have turned hawkish again after perhaps um, some pauses, notably the Reserve Bank of Australia, Bank of Canada, they've surprised to the upside. The um, uh, Bank of England yesterday uh, really just um, came in with a, a surprise 50 basis points. Market was expecting 25. I thought 50 was um, a possibility, but I thought it was a distant possibility. Well, it seems that the Bank of England sort of panicked, came in with that 50 basis points. Um, and even the testimony in front of um, the House and the Senate by Fed Chair Powell, very hawkish, very hawkish. So um, interest rates tend to put pressure on risk markets. And I think that's uh, potentially what we're seeing here, Gurdip. So great comment there. Um, let's just take a look at the dollar daily chart and look what's happened here. Okay, the the dollar all of a sudden has moved from zone three back into the neutral territory. So this is actually was quite surprising to me. Um, I was expecting dollar uh, weakness. I think that the Bank of England just really um, moved the pressure the pressure gauge, uh, the sentiment gauge, and effectively you've got this uh, push up. In the US dollar, even yesterday, the um, initial jobless claims came in higher than expected, and it just pushed the dollar, pushed the dollar into zone two. Well, a movement from zone three into zone two—that's a relative movement of strength. So it looks to me as if there is going to be a sentiment shift. Now, the timing of the sentiment shift is going to be extremely difficult here because we've been doing most of the analysis on the weekly charts. Weekly charts are not timing charts, okay? They, because why they're not timing charts is because it could take a few weeks before the signals play out. And um, so, but it does look as if there is now starting to be movement towards the risk off part of the market as opposed to the um, risk on part of the market. So some sort of corrective, uh, chart action, some sort of corrective market action, some sort of corrective price action, certainly on the cards now. And I think we've got to start preparing ourselves for that because we don't want to be whipsawed. We don't want to be taking positions when the market is actually starting to put pressure against those positions. So let's be very mindful of that. All right, uh, that's where we shall leave it for this morning. If there's any other comments, please go ahead and type those in. Any other comments, please go ahead, type those in. All right. 
And I think coming through, it's a pleasure, Zanetta, my pleasure there. All right, let's wrap up here, guys. I want to wish everyone a very good weekend ahead, and we shall uh, chat again come Monday morning. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers.